But I've been driving now for about 10 minutes and that's the longest I've had without this car throwing up that air suspension fault. I think I've got it. And I've rotated the steering wheel so that the nut here is facing at this angle. What I've managed to do is get a socket on the other side, stop the bolt from spinning. I need to undo the following screws. This one, this one, this one, and there's one on the other side as well. Aha, and there's your steering angle sensor. There you go. One steering angle sensor. Right, let's get it on the bench. Right, so if you look carefully inside here, that one there is much more worn down than that one. I'm gonna turn the steering wheel all the way to the right and all the way to the left. Let's see if that clears. Oh, blimey, it did. It did clear it. Welcome once again to Range Rover Air Suspension Part 3. Is it 3? <laughs> Welcome to Range Rover Air Suspension Fix Part 4. Quickly recap, I know you want to get into it, I'm not going to bore you with it, but just to let you know, I did a, a video where I just cleared the codes on the iCar Soft. The problem went away but it came back. So there must have been a hardware issue. On the second video, went into a little bit more deeper with the diagnostic. We found that there was three different types of issues all linked together, ABC, steering angle sensor, air suspension. And so we cleared all those faults within it. Problem went away, but unfortunately it came back again. So on the third video, I actually stripped down the air compressor because that seemed to be the culprit with with these issues when I've researched it online and there's a little seal inside which I've replaced that video shows you how to get the air compressor out the trunk how to strip it down uh, what tools you obviously need where to get the part from importantly we put it all back together again thinking that the pump was actually overheating overrunning causing the fault but nevertheless the fault is still here so part four what I'm going to do steering angle sensor we're gonna get into it. We're gonna make sure that the steering angle sensor's got no worn contacts, because that's what my gut feeling is. Uh, but first of all, we've got to get the thing out. So enough talking, let's get into it. So move the seat of the driver's side right back. Obviously, if this is um, in America, you're gonna be on the other side. So don't adjust your screens. So what I like to do is just put a cloth down because I think I'm gonna be working on my back. So a little cloth just makes it a little bit more comfortable for you. Okay, so what we're needing to do is remove this side panel. There's a fixing at the back and then this just pushes off that way. Then underneath here, we'll just remove that underside there as well. I like to use a little handheld drill. It's just low powered, but it just makes it a lot more easy when you're working sort of upside down and in close proximity to stuff. This just pulls down and pushes off that way. Easy as that. There's two fixings, the run the side here. Kind of feel your way to get to them. There's one. There's the other one. Under the back here, just a little plastic screw that you turn, that undoes. And this panel will come down. And just disconnect the lights so you can get in there. And with this one, you can just kind of, this is the old plug for the OBD I think. Uh, you can just sort of pop the whole thing out that way and just keep these plugs at the back. They can be quite difficult to pull those out. So that's the under tray removed. Let's 
So, show you where the steering angle sensor is. Here's the steering angle, just here. So we need to disconnect this plug. And then once that's disconnected, we're gonna undo that nylock there. And I also need to undo the following screws. This one, this one, this one, and there's one on the other side as well. Once I've undone those four screws, I then need to pull the whole steering rack that way towards the back of the car. So let's get this off and see how we go. Okay, so what I've done is I've just turned the key on and I've rotated the steering wheel so that the nut here is facing at this angle. This allows me to get a decent extension on and I can now undo that nut. It was quite stiff. What I've managed to do is get a socket on the other side to stop the nut and stop the bolt from spinning. And there's the nut off. Now that I've got that pinch bolt removed, I need to undo these screws here. These bolts here. The 13 mil again. Don't need to loosen them, take them all off, just loosen them. There's another two at the back. A bit hard to see, but you can get to them. So I'm going to undo this. Uh, this is three screws on the bottom, and you'll be able to then remove the top and bottom of this cowling. So there's three screws, there's one that's slightly smaller but it uses the same star head and there's a slightly longer black one. What I want to do is move the steering wheel, try and get as much access as possible. Move that down. So I'm hoping now that I can access in here to get to those other two 13mm bolts. You can see there's one there, just about the other one on the other side. I'll try and get this flexible socket on, should just about reach. Yeah. There you go. Right, there's one. Let's even get the other one. That's the trickiest one. Okay, that's it all loose. Right. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is remove these bolts. If I can reach my hand up in there, because I need to remove them completely. So I've removed the last bolts, there's four of these. Now I'm going to pull the steering wheel this direction towards the back of the car to separate that joint. Okay, that looks like it's separated. So we need to remember which way that goes in. And now hopefully I can just remove this. Aha, and there's your steering angle sensor. There we go. One steering angle sensor. Right, let's get it on the bench and let's see if there's any of the contacts I've worn out. I can see that it says the original BMW, so there's a very good chance this is the original one for the car. If I need to replace it, I'm going to have to do the whole thing of that again. So, yeah, at least I know how to do it so the learning curve is over. Let's get on the bench. So, there's the details there. 
and there's these tiny little star screws I'm gonna see I don't know if I've got a screwdriver for that but we'll have a look got these little tiny little screwdrivers that you get when you repair mobile phones so it might be lucky oh that looks good yeah that's it that's the one that is the one there's one of them you only got one shot at getting this if you strip it it's buggered so I'm just kind of pushing down hard and turning okay last one right I'm hoping in here there's a contact that could be worn out fingers crossed if not I've got to go and get another one I'll buy a used one oh there's one more screw there I've seen quite a few of these on online I think Amazon sell them oh ah there there we go if I right so inside here right so if you look carefully inside here this is exactly what I was expecting to see that one there is much more worn down than that one and I think that is what's worn out the other side doesn't look too bad there's the other side hard to see so those look okay that's all right yeah we'll look at this one here that one's completely missing worn out now, I might be lucky and sort of be able to tweak that up a little bit I don't know but I need a new one that's for sure <laughs> yeah they actually when you look closely they are very fine um, almost like a comb and it's just worn away so I need a new one So obviously when this goes on here and the steering is being turned this is what's picking up the uh, the angle and uh, I need a new one basically simple as that I'm gonna give it a clean I'm gonna put it back together and we'll see but I don't think this will last much longer it's, uh, it's had it so I'll give this a clean I'm not hoping for very much I think I definitely need a new one but it might last for a couple of weeks who knows So when I took this off, I'll just check the video. This here was in line with the edge of that. So I'm going to put it back exactly as close as I can to how it was. might just put a mark as a little datum so I know
Right, so my plan is I'm going to put this back on the car. I'm not going to bother filming it. You know how it's done. You just do it all in reverse. Um, going to make sure this is orientated in the right position. So I'll check back on the video so that I know which way around it went um, so it can match up with these spleens. And uh, at least now I know how to actually take the thing off. I know the procedure and what tools to use. So it should be quicker for the next time. I'm going to order one of these online. I may get a new one. I'll probably get a used one. Um, make sure you get a genuine part. I've always found whenever you're buying anything electrical for cars, don't muck about with, with cheap stuff. If you can't afford the genuine one, then get a used good second-hand one. Um, they're usually very well uh, engineered and designed for that specific electrical task. So you, you, you want to make sure you get it right. So wish me luck. I'm going to put it back on the car. Wow, it's getting dark. Right. Okay, so what I found when I put the steering angle back on, there's actually a locating pin, so it has to go in the right position. It can't go any, any other way, which is great. Also, when you put the spline back in and that nut and bolt that goes through the 13mm one, there's a little chamfer in the spline and you've got to line that up. So again, you can't really get the steering wheel in the wrong place, push it all the way home and then tighten it up. It's a bit of a pain. You're working on your back. You've got extension rods and uh, flexible joints, but you know, it saves you money and you can get there. So what I'm gonna do now, before it gets too dark, if I can get some light here, I'm gonna put the iCar soft on. I'm not expecting this fault to go because I know what the issue I believe is with the steering angle sensor, but I just wanna make sure everything works. So first of all, why don't we just start the car and, and see what happens. Turn the steering wheel all the way to the right and all the way to the left. Let's see if that clears. Oh, blimey, it did. It did clear it. And I don't have any suspension fault. Wow, it's a bit dark to see because I've lost the light on my... Hang on. We don't have any suspension error fault there now. I did the wheel calibration all the way to the right, all the way to the left. So uh, I'm gonna take the car for a drive. Um, I know it used to come on after about five minutes. Hey, fingers crossed, it might be okay for a little while. So at the moment, the light stayed off, which is a good sign. Um, as I said, let's, let's keep monitoring this. What I was thinking whilst I was driving is, in fact, hold on a second. Let's get the old seatbelt on. Safety first, everybody, safety first. Oh, hope the cops aren't watching, do apologize. Right, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that when I buy the uh, steering angle sensor, um, I remember reading that they're gonna be coded to the vehicle. Now, because you saw me when I took it apart, you can actually split the two and the bit that's worn out isn't the bit with the coding on it, it's the, it's the base. Um, so if I can take the top part off, I'll look at the part number on the one that I've got um, that I took off the vehicle, match up that exact part number, which is a BMW part. So then I can take the good brushes of the one that I buy and put it into my existing one. And that way the vehicle doesn't think that I've actually changed this steering angle sensor. So there's a little tip there. So that's my plan. I've seen them online used for about maybe um, 30, 40 pounds. And what I'm gonna say, if you ever do buy anything electrical, and this is what I'm gonna do, and it's used, make sure you find the newest part obviously that you can and contact the buyer. Maybe he's a private person, maybe he's just a, a dealer that, that deals in scrap vehicles, but ask as many questions as you can to try and find out what the condition is and basically how new and how many miles did the vehicle have. Now this vehicle's got 151,000 miles, so there's a good telltale sign that anything I'd say over 100,000 miles, maybe that steering angle sensor is, uh, you know, is starting to go. So if I find one with say 80,000 miles in, I'll buy it, 30 quid, what's that, about 50 US, fingers crossed, maybe I've saved myself a lot of money, hundreds if not thousands of pounds. So far, I don't see any air suspension light. Everything's feeling good. Um, the light is uh, on the suspension level is looking uh, as it should do. I can raise it and lower it. It goes off and on, you know, the 30 mile an hour maximum, which is all good. I'm just gonna lower the suspension back down and it's going down nicely. Well, I've been driving now for about 10 minutes and that's the longest I've had without this car throwing up that air suspension fault. So I think I've got it. I think, I think I've got it. And I'm quite, 
quite chuffed with that. You know, that was a fair bit of fault finding. If you have a look at the other three videos, you see exactly what I did. But you know what, importantly, I've done a bit of preventative maintenance as well, because that compressor in the back there, it has a seal which tends to wear out. Now I've done that now, and uh, I'm hoping the video I did, you know, helps other people. And on the subject of helping, I was um, just wondering if you could do me that favor and give me a thumbs up, because what that does is it really makes me see on my analytics if these videos are being helpful. And if they are, then I'll, I'll do more. And um, when people say subscribe and all the rest, well, that purely is actually so that if you're watching this particular group of videos I've done, then when you subscribe, you'll, you'll, you'll see the other uh, three or four videos in that sequence. So, you know, it's really helpful for you. I think I'm there. I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna have a beer and um, put my feet up in front of my new log fire. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. <laughs> this has been Groove On. See you on the next one. Well, there you go.